And we're pleased to be joined right now on video chat by, from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, receiver Bryant Mitchell. Had a cup of coffee with the Cardinals, too, and see if fans will remember him with great times with the Edmonton Eskimos. Happy New Year, Bryant, if people are still saying that, and thanks for chiming in today. Happy New Year. Thank you so much. I truly appreciate you guys for having me. We've been talking a lot of CFL, and we'll continue that with you. But look, we got to, with Super Bowl 54 close by in South Florida, Niners and Chiefs, the all red Super Bowl. Can you play? And unfortunately, your red Buccaneers aren't there. But what's your take on the matchup? I think it's going to be a great matchup. I think that there's two really good teams, one with a really great defense and one with a really great offense. So I think that all in all, we're going to see a great game. And, uh, I don't know who I who I have to, you know, pull it out yet. Well, at some point you're going to have to pick, man. So if, if you were going to lay down some dough right now, who are you, who are you putting it on? Let's be let's be real oh, about it. Oh man, that's, that's tough. Uh as of today, the way I feel it would be the 49ers today. Last like 3 days ago, I thought the Chiefs were going to take it no matter what, but today I'm like 49ers definitely. Uh, I'm with you. I'm picking the 49ers, too, and I, I understand. They're practicing already. Um, what's your really? thought on the two weeks in between games? Basically a bye week, and then they'll get to work in, in Miami. How do you like this, as, just as a football fan? Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely difficult. I think from a fan perspective, you know, you want to see some football. And I think from a player perspective, you know, you're kind of – riding that high of just getting off a win so you kind of want to get back into playing right away and then you know you take a win you're up high and then it's like okay you got to bring it back to earth to uh, go and practice so I think that that you know becomes a somewhat sometimes a bit of an issue but if you stay hungry I think it you know it'll work itself out before we go back to your Edmonton time since you left the Eskimos where you were a very dangerous receiver take us through your football life since you signed in in the National Football League What's been going on? You know, it, it's been a journey. Uh, I signed with the Arizona Cardinals. You know, I was super excited to be there. I had some really great coaches that uh, worked me out, and they ended up, you know, getting fired and going somewhere else. So, you know, I still felt like I liked Arizona. I liked the city. It was close to home, and I haven't played, you know, that close to home in a while, even since college. So it was definitely a place that I wanted to be, uh, you know, when people change, things change. Uh, and, you know, they drafted three receivers, made me an odd man out, so they let me go, you know, unfortunately. But fortunately, I was definitely able to come to this great team in Tampa Bay. And, you know, although I uh, had the injury bug hit me early, you know, I tore my Achilles in the first preseason game. Uh, just built a lot of great relationships and a lot of great, you know, friends and, you know, guys that I consider family now. Yeah, we're coming along pretty good towards the end of the year. So how do things look for 2020? You know, uh, in my opinion, everything's promising because you never know. You know, I trust God in all things. I, I truly believe that he has control in all of it. So for me, honestly, it's like, hey, uh, I just I'm just going to keep working hard. I'm running already. I was jumping yesterday. Uh, so, you know, I'm excited about the progression of things. And, you know, I'm waiting to see where the cards fall. Hey, Brian, it's Craig Smith. Achilles is a tough one. Yeah, it is yeah. a tough one. And um, how's it doing now? And how's the rehab coming along? It's, you know, it's honestly doing great. Uh, yeah. You know, I spoke with uh, Emmanuel Sanders of the 49ers, who actually tore his last year. And, uh, you know, if you see him, you know, he came back in eight, nine months and he's playing, he's full speed. He looks great, honestly. And he just really gave me some encouragement on things that I needed to do. Uh, you know, the diet that I needed to take, the rehab, that the steps that I needed to take to uh, put myself in a better position and, you know, just pushing myself beyond what I, I truly believe that I can go. You know, not pushing myself to hurt, but pushing myself to where I'm just getting past that threshold every time. So rehab's going great. Like I said, I'm running and, you know, jumping. So that's amazing. Will you be ready for training camp? Of course. Yeah. Well, Four seasons with the Edmonton Eskimos, uh, Brian. Talk about your time in the city of champions. You know what? It was wonderful. Uh, I love that place. You know, it's it's a home for me. Uh, I definitely, you know, have built a lot of great friendships, a lot of great leadership. You know, in in that area. You know, one of my best friends. You know, still to this day, Brandon Zilstra. We 
you know, we do everything together. <laughs> so, you know, it, it's brought me so much it, and it taught me so much to be able to get to this point. You know, 20, I'm just looking at your Wikipedia, 2015, 16, 17, 18 in Edmonton. So that would coincide with winning a Grey Cup with the Chris Jones Eskimos in Winnipeg. Am I right? Yes, but they released me that year. Oh, okay. Well, my question was, how were you identified by that staff? Uh, how did you end up coming to Canada? Because that was your first pro experience. So uh, you mentioned you're a God guy. Everything happens for a reason. How did it yes, get sir. to be that you got signed in Edmonton? Um, I left college. Uh, didn't get any looks out of college. And uh, I did a couple of CFL workouts, you know, and Actually, my trainer from back home, Alex Johnson at Alex Johnson Sports and Fitness, he actually called me and I was ready to be done with football. You know, I have three little boys. I was like, you know, I'm going to be at home, be a dad, get a job. And he goes, you have to go to this workout. And I'm like, "Nah, I'm done. He said, no, you go to this one, you're going to get signed. And I'm like, I don't know, like I'm done. You know, it's not working out. He said, this one, I promise you, you'll get signed. And I go to the workout and Ed Hervey sees me. And from that day on, I mean, it clicked. I ran a few routes. I called a nice, uh, it was a post corner post. I'll never forget it. <laughs> and I called it over the shoulder over a guy. And he stops the whole workout. And he like, you know, if you know anything about it, Harry, he's the most serious guy in the world when it comes to football. But he's like one of the most genuine people in the world. <laughs> so he like fingers me over and I'm like, oh man, what did I do wrong? And he asked me, he said, what are you doing next week? And I actually had a class. And I said, and I'm looking, I'm thinking to myself, I said, nothing. <laughs> and he goes, I want to bring you in the mini camp. <laughs> and so he brings me in the mini camp. And, you know, the rest was history from there. So when they released me, you know, uh, he actually wanted me to still stay. So he calls me the next year and brings me back. Why should, uh, where was that mini camp at? In Los Angeles. It was in, in LA. Okay, Coast. cool. So that was the true sure. pay your fee and show up and, and show your oh, stuff stuff. Yeah. Believe me, I paid at least nine hundred dollars that year in just wow. workouts. Yeah. So <laughs> there's there's a guy that wants it. Now, I saw you tweeting the other day, maybe a couple of weeks ago now, advice for CFLers signing yes. in the NFL. Can you yes. tell our viewers what that was all about? So a lot of guys get to the NFL and they think, well, I'm a great receiver. There's a lot of great receivers in the world. You know, uh, there's a lot of guys who can play this position and there's a lot of guys who have trained their whole lives, just like many of us too have played this whole position. And the issue becomes is when those guys get in here, they don't understand that they're treated as if they're an undrafted guy, not a priority free agent, not a, you know, not a guy who's drafted in the seventh, but they're treated like an undrafted guy. And they, you know, they're few and far between. And the way to get on a team is by special teams because you have to be at our position and you have to be better than the fifth corner or you have to be better than, you know, the fifth safety or whatever it may be because that's the guy you're competing with on that special team spot. So I was just giving the advice, hey, guys, make sure that whatever you do, you get on all the big four. Anything that you can get on, if they ask you to long snap, go out there and long snap. Learn how to do whatever they're asking you to do because then that makes you less expendable. And if I can be a guy that they know they can't get rid of, then I'm going to be around the league for a long time. That is outstanding advice. And we certainly heard it going around the CFL for years too. <laughs> Bryant, thanks yeah. for this. All the best with your rehab no and we'll be watching for you in 2020. Thank you guys for having me. I truly appreciate it. Bryant, stay in touch. Oh, I definitely will. I'm here. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Bryant. You're watching Rod Peterson on demand. For more of The Rod Peterson Show, visit rodpeterson.com or follow Rod Peterson on social media.